Hi, welcome back. Uh, in this video, we are going to look at uh, partitioning, bucketing, uh, and uh, we we'll, we'll look at how queries uh, can be run on these partition and bucketed tables, how we can ingest data, how we can insert data into these uh, uh, different uh, kinds of tables. Now, before we start, you might be knowing the reason that we partition a table, uh, quite a few of you might be well versed with Oracle uh, or uh, any RDBMS like SQL or uh, place like that. So in those, what we do is we partition tables. The primary reason of partitioning a table is performance to improve the performance of a query. In Hive 2, that is the one and only reason to partition a table. For those of you who had experience in partitioning tables in uh, uh, an RDBMS, it is very cumbersome. You got to write a function, then you got to decide which, uh, whenever data comes in, which part the data goes to, so which kind of partition the data goes. In Hive, this is somewhat simpler. So what we're going to see in this particular uh, session is how to partition a table in Hive. Okay. First and foremost, we look at manual partition. Partition. Okay. What is manual partitioning? I'll explain it to you with the help of an example. Okay, so as we always do, we get into our Cloudera virtual machine. Hive is running. Okay, and we'll create a partitioned table, and this will be a manual partition. Now, assume someone has given you files like these. Okay, say. I have a file called UK Edinburgh.csv. This this is an employee file. Okay, so I got the employee number, name, salary, and department. Okay, so these are all the employees resident in the UK and who are working in Edinburgh. So someone has given me a file. So this has been segregated. Okay, then I have another file which has got similar data. It follows a similar format or a pattern. All of these employees who are resident in the UK but working in London. So employee number, name, salary and department. So it's exactly the same pattern. Now similarly, I've got employees from the USA who are working in California and employees in USA who are working in New York. So I got four different files. So someone has already segregated the data and given it to me. They have separated all the employees in the UK, all the employees in the USA and they have again separated the employees based on the city that they work in. Okay, So this is the data that we have. Now once you have this data, your boss comes to you and says, okay, this is the data that I have. I want you to create a hive table. So what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Okay, I'll create a table and I'll, I'll create a normal a table say uh, employee table and I'll keep on uh, doing a append say every file I'll say load data in path into this file uh, into this particular table okay so that is one way of doing it but here since we already know that data has been partitioned okay and they have been partitioned based on the country and the city we can quickly think of a partition like this say we'll have a partition which will be so we'll create a table which has got a partition like this so we'll partition by we'll create a table and we'll partition by 
because someone has country and city because this will fit in with that pattern data pattern that we have and those four different files that we have we have UK USA and here we have Edinburgh London and here you have New York and California okay so it will be best to partition data this way so country and city okay so let's work on that example now okay let's do some code as like before I already have created a script file the script file will be provided to you okay I'll explain you the syntax in a second so creating a table is very similar to what we have been doing so far again probably this is something new it says if not exist only then create okay so I'm creating a managed table as I mentioned before there is no difference between a managed table and external table when it comes to all this partitioning and all the various operations that we do okay so so now we have a table I am creating a table called employee underscore part and here I am providing all the fields so fields are 1 2 3 4 so you get employee ID name salary and department number okay and probably you'll see a new line here comment which I have not used before but just to complete uh, the syntax uh, we'll use a new feature in every different table creation script okay the most important bit is here partitioned by country city string now if you look at this these two things are not available in the data file so there is no country there is no city all we know is the file belongs to a country and a city okay and these two fields are not inside this data file okay so this is how you create so I say country string and city string and then I create the table so this table has been created now let's look at what's in the meta string so uh, what's in the uh, sorry on the warehouse so I create in the warehouse I have a EMPL part that's the table that I created and there's nothing inside here right now okay but I do know that this table is a partition table and this partition is based on country and city okay Good. so what next now we have to ingest the data or we have to insert data into this file it's a bit different than we do before so you will use the syntax load data local in path now as I said these files are in the same folder that I have started hive from so I'll say load data in path uk underscore edinburgh dot csv into table okay into table what was the name of the table EMPL underscore part partition so that's the partition okay and here I say country I have to use the same name again country is equal to in single quotes I'll say UK comma city is equal to Edinburgh I'll just use the initials ED okay so that's about it now load data local in path this file should get into this table and the partitions I'm specifying see this file this data should go into this partition now I can do anything here I can just say India and I can just say uh, 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 Mumbai but obviously that is not right okay so we are partitioning based on the data file that was given to us so you got to be careful you if you make a mistake here it is not hives responsibility because you'll be querying based on these partitions okay so load data local in path 
into table EMPL this one. Okay. So, let me do an end. So, once I do that, the data is ingested. What do I do next? Let me load London now. So, London will be similar. UK underscore London. Right. And here in the end, I will say LON. Now, be careful not to put overwrite here. When you key in overwrite, it will erase the contents of that table and insert a fresh one. Okay. So, we want to append this data into that table. So, let us do an enter again. Okay. Now, let us go back to the warehouse and see what's happened. Now, that's the table that we have. Now, if you before we inserted the data, when we looked at this folder, it didn't have anything. Now, if you click that, it will have two folders. Okay. So, basically it had first partition is equal to country is equal to UK. Second partitions would be Ed Edinburgh and London. So, these CSV files are dropped in that particular folder like we saw here. So, the CSV files are dropped here and here. Okay. So, let us do that again. Now, let us go back and create another partition for country is equal to USA and city equal to California and New York. Okay. Let us do that. Okay. So, let us USA. California and the other one would be New York. So, let us go and have a look at the table again or the warehouse directory. So, you see a new partition country is equal to USA and you have California and New York. Okay, this is where the data has been stored. Now, when you want to query this data, what would you want to query? You would want to query one partition of that particular table. Okay. So, let us do a query now. So, let us say select star from EMPL underscore part. Okay. So, what happens when I do an EMPL underscore part? And well, let's do an order by order by e name. So when I do that, it is going to query the entire warehouse. Now there was no use of me creating a partition. I would want to force the user to use to query only one partition of that particular table. So, to force users to use a predicate or a filter, what I would do is I will set an environment variable saying force people to specify a partition when they are querying. So, if I do that again, it will give me an error. Okay. Sorry. I have some water. Anyway, so, so if I query this, now, after I have set this environment variable, it, it gives me a prompt saying no partition predicate found. Okay. So, I need to have a partition predicate. So, what would I do? So, I will say show partitions 
EMPL underscore part. Okay. Now it has showed me all the partitions of this particular table. Now it becomes easier for me to query. So I'll say from EMPL where country is equal to UK. Okay. So I got a filter in my predicate. So there you go. So it has just queried UK and not the entire data warehouse. Okay. So that's what it is. So a manual partition in a manual partition, you create the table, you specify the partitions. Now based on what you think that data files are or what do you, what you think those data files represent. Okay. What is the use case of this? Say for a manual partition, what kind of use cases you can have? Say example, you are having a lot of logs that are generated. One from Tomcat, say a server, another from a different source, say some kind of a log file from another source and uh, probably you are tailing one file. So all of this, the source we know one is coming from Tomcat and another one is another log from some other server and here I am tailing a particular file which uh, is generating some output and I know all of them have a similar pattern. I have a similar pattern like this. Okay. So this is the best possible way to partition data. So I'll have, so I'll create a table and I'll say partition by what source is equal to Tomcat. Oh, so, sorry, source, which is, could be a string. And then when I insert data, I'll say source is equal to Tomcat and source is equal to uh, some log file. Okay. So when the data is already segregated, we know that uh, this data is coming from a different source and we know that we, we are hundred percent sure, then we can go for manual partitioning. But manual partitioning becomes somewhat uh, cumbersome after some time. Now it is all well and fine when all the data is in production, you have created this table, say example, you have created this uh, uh, production table and you have ingested data. Once you have uh, inserted data, everything is fine. But to insert data, it may take a very long time because as you saw here, as you saw here, we were loading data one at a time, say one partition at a time. So this was one partition, this was another partition. Just imagine if you have 20 odd partitions, you'll have to do this 20 odd times. Yes, of course you can have an automated script that can do this for you. But one partition at a time, this is what, this is the downside of a manual partitioning. Okay. So how do we overcome this downside. Something high provides, high provides something else, high provides dynamic partitioning, okay, which solves the problem that we had with manual partitioning, okay. So dynamic partitioning. Here we don't have to insert data one partition at a time. But with dynamic partitioning, we'll have to follow certain steps. We will create a staging table where we'll have the data. Now, 
we are creating the staging table just to show what dynamic partitioning is okay but this staging table may already exist in your environment in your system now this staging table may be it is running uh, queries which are uh, uh, probably the queries that you run on this staging table is getting slower and slower so somehow you need to make these queries faster so what you do is you try and create another partitioned table so we'll create a partition table we create a partition table we we'll specify the partitions and the third step what we'll do is we'll we'll select the data from one and insert into two so this is what we'll follow but as i said it could well be that this table is already existing in your uh, system now just to demonstrate dynamic partitioning we'll be doing we'll be creating a staging table and then we'll create a partition table and we'll we'll insert we'll select data from the staging table and insert into our partition table so these are the steps that we are going to follow okay so let's jump into the code as like before i have created the tables right but here okay so copy paste so this is a staging table okay and the data that we are going to use has got all of this in there okay uh, this is a, another file that i'll just show it to you in a second so that's the file that we are going to use got data so if you look at this uh, these fields and relate to these fields in there so we have employee number name salary department country city and date of joining okay so that's the uh, meta information that i am giving you okay so this is a file that i just that i generated uh, using a tool uh, using a small program and uh, to demonstrate a dynamic table so here it's a staging table and we are assuming that the staging table is present in our system okay and let's insert data load data local in path emp into table empl stage okay so say select star from empl underscore stage now we have this data around 400 odd records in there 300 odd records in there okay so assume now we can come back to that part we are, we are going to assume that this table is already existing and the queries that are running on this table are very slow okay so what do we do now we'll create another a partition table okay so let's do a partition table okay i'll explain the syntax in a bit so i'm saying create table if not exists production table the same number not the same number but these are the columns in there now the difference between the previous table the previous staging table and this one would be department number see department number will be missing from this list okay but department number will appear in this line partitioned by department number so i am taking of one of the fields one of the columns and saying okay partition by that column okay so department number so i am i am partitioning by the department number now you can partition by country or city or say a year of joining so you can partition by anything that you want to okay but in this case i am going to partition by department number because i just have five departments okay 
I'll explain it to you in a bit why you cannot partition by country and city or some other month or something like that, okay? Or year of joining, right? So let's look at the syntax. Create table, employee production. All what it has is department number that is missing and it has come into this partition. So missing department number appears in the partition column, okay? And I say enter. Now I've created a partitioned table. So let's look into this hive warehouse and say EMPL stage, okay? And it has got the entire data. There is no partitioning there. And EMPL production. There is nothing in there because I've not inserted data, right? So EMPL production has got nothing under its older structure. So what do I do next? The next thing that I do is I select data from staging table and insert into production table based on the partition. Okay. So the query is a little bit specialized. Okay. For that. Now, first and foremost, before we do that, we have to set two properties. By default, dynamic partitioning is disabled. So we set this property to be true saying set hive dynamic partitioning to be true. Okay. And we say there is another property that we set. Dynamic partitioning mode is non-strict. Now, if, if it is strict, it won't allow you to do a dynamic partitioning. Okay. So, let's do this first and I'll explain it to you later. Okay. Now, the third step would be this one. This one is the third step here. Select from one and insert into this. Right. So, let's do that. I have to explain you this query. It's a bit specialized. So I'll say insert overwrite into production table, EMPL production, the partition table. And the partition is specified by department number. Now the select should be like this. Select EMP number, salary and all of that. Okay. And these columns should match the columns in EMPL production, but the partition column should be the last column to be uh, appearing in the select statement. Okay. So this one should be here. Sorry. This department number should be the last one in the select statement. Okay. From employee stage. So that is how the partition happens. So I do an enter in there. So what it will do is it will look at all the data that's in there group by department number and create the partition on department number. Okay. Okay. So it has said loading partition this line. Now let's have a look at the folder employee production. There you go, department number one and all employees of department number one are loaded. So MapReduce job was run behind the scenes. In the reduce phase, the grouping was done based on the department and all data based on the department was segregated and the partition was created. Okay. So let's do some tests. Let's do a count of star on staging table and see how much time it takes. Which is a non-partition table. Employee stage is a non-partition table. Correct? It took 27.43 seconds. Okay. So let's do the same query on 
production the partition table it is 26 seconds even though it is just one second less this is this becomes a, a major performance gain when you have data in the uh, which are in the order of one terabyte or two terabytes or five terabytes okay so shaving off a second each on at say uh, one kb or a 20 kb of file just imagine the amount of performance gains that you will get by partitioning a table okay right now what i want you to observe is this employee production was partition based on department number so 1 2 3 4 5 let's have a look at the data again okay so had we partitioned the data on country and city what would have happened so let's let's do this so, we partitioned the data, we did a dynamic partition, so that was dynamic. We partitioned the data based on department number and we knew the department number are quite few and they were just five departments. So, I know that there could be at the most five partitions. Now, what if I had done the partition based on country and city or city and or, okay. So, I do not know the number of countries in there. Probably the 300 employees in their employee records, maybe they are from 300 different countries. Let's assume they are from 100 different countries and city, the 300 employees, if I partition on the city, probably every employee is from a different city and say 300 cities, right. So how many partitions will I have? I will have 300 partitions here and I will have 100 partitions here. So, what is the big deal? 100 partitions or 300 partitions? It should not matter really. No, but we have a small problem here. If we go back to our basics of HDFS, Hadoop uh, file system, what does in HDFS, we, sp we need a large block size. This, this block size is configured, so 64 MB, see, uh, 64 MB yeah, or 128 MB block size. Why do we need a large block size in HDFS? Because it is good for sequential reads. Now, if you go back to the basics again, the latency and throughput, uh, to locate that 64 MB at one place would be much faster than if you have this a file scattered over different places on the hard disk to collect that and read it it will take a longer time so hence we have a large block size in HDFS right so if I have a partition of 300 and say 300 files were created and this was city correct so city was partition 300 files were created so just imagine every file should be at least 64 MB because this is the ideal size we are saying. Now if they are not 300 odd files the name node will be storing meta information for them and this will become a hotspot and when this becomes a hotspot your entire system may become slow 
it could well happen that you may run out of memory even for a small select because HDFS by its very nature deals with large files and large block sizes okay so if we have a few partitions it will mean that the block sizes will be as close to 64 MB ideally every partition should have 64 to 128 MB based on whatever you have specified in your uh, configuration so that is the reason why we did not partition based on city or country okay even though this is a very small file now whenever we do some examples it is a small file because uh, the resources at my disposal is very less so i am not working on a, a huge cluster where i can analyze 10 gigs of data or 20 gig of data straight away I am just working on a pseudo distributed mode. This is just to demonstrate certain concepts. Okay. So that is the reason why we didn't partition on country and city. Okay. Right. Okay. So now we saw what a manual partitioning is, what dynamic partitioning is. In a dynamic partition, we just specify the column name. The column name doesn't exist in the in the table itself. It is uh, exists in the partition column. Okay. And what you do, you insert, you select the data from a staging table and you insert it into a dynamic partition table. Okay. So this is what you do uh, here in this table. So you select the data from 1 and you insert into 2. Okay. And when you insert, you do the select statement in such a way that the partition column appears last in the select statement. Okay. Now uh, let's say do not know the quality of the uh, this kind of data. We do not know meta, we do not know, we do not have enough knowledge about this data. So what do we do? So let's have a look at another table, another uh, data file. Now, and this is a very large file. Assume this is a very, very large file. Obviously, it's not that large, but it's a very large file. And uh, again, all this data is in a single, is in a, uh, is in a normal table, a non-partition table. And the queries that we run on this table are becoming slower. So what's the solution? Partitioning? Yes. But what to partition on? Should I partition on this stock exchange? Okay, I'll have to give you some information about this data. This is a stock exchange. This is a script or the stock. This is the date of trading. Then uh, we have open, close, high and low and adjacent close and this is the volume. Now, how do you partition this data? It is quite difficult to partition this data because I do not know how many scripts are there. These scripts could be just 10 or these scripts could be 1000 that are being traded in the stock exchange. Okay, And I can't partition on the stock exchange because it is only one stock exchange data. So, it is as good as having a normal table without any partition. Okay, So, in this case or in this case, where uh, here we knew the department numbers are quite a f uh, just uh, a few handful say five uh, what about country and city so in these cases there is another little handy uh, hive utility or hive partitioning that comes into picture it is called bucketing Now, we do not know how to partition a table. We can bucket the table. I am not saying you can, you either have to partition or bucket. You can first partition a table and then bucket it as well. So, you can have both the properties in there. Okay. 
but for simplicity's sake, we'll just do bucketing, right? Now, bucketing depends on a concept called hash, hashing. Right. Suppose, let me let me tell you uh, about this concept. Suppose I have a large file having employees one the name of say John, Jane, Oleg, uh, then Lisa, Ram, okay. Now I'll always come in there and I query this data. When I query this data for John or Lisa, I go through this entire structure. Okay, So I read line by line and find out how many Johns are there, how many Lisas are there. And it gives me the result. Okay. Now what if I assign a hash value to John? Hash value to each and every entry in there. And I create some hash buckets. So I'll say hash values 0 to 10 will be in here, 11 to 25 will be in here and 26 to 26 and over okay, will be here. Right. So let's assume John has got a hash value of 14, Jane has got 2, Oleg has got 3, 4 and 20, 26. Okay. So when I store this data, they will be segregated into buckets. So John will fall into this bucket. Okay. Jan will fall into this bucket. Oleg will also fall into this bucket. Lisa falls into that bucket and Ram will fall into this bucket. So now when I query for John, first and foremost, I'll try and get the hash value. Say the same algorithm I'll use and say, okay, oh, John's hash value is 14. And I know 14 is in this range. So I directly go to that bucket and try and locate John. Here you see there is only one entry called John. So rather than going through each and every row like I did it before, I directly got John out because of this hashing algorithm. Okay, And I segregated them into, buck into small hash buckets. So that is the concept of hashing uh, and hash buckets. Okay. So let us look at this example now. So now what I will do is first and foremost as usual I need to create a staging table. So let me create a staging table. Create Now I insert the data NYSE daily into staging. This is the syntax for bucketing. Exactly the same columns, no change in the column. Symbol is inside the table and what we just do is we say clustered by symbol into 20 buckets. Now what is this number? I will just let you know. So I am assuming symbol the number of symbols are higher than 20. So I have more than 20 unique symbols. So all those symbols will go in one of this bucket, one symbol will go into one of these buckets. So that's the number that I assuming. Okay. So clustered by symbol 
means every symbol will have a hash value and it will go into one of the buckets okay so if i have 100 symbols here it could be possible that every bucket has got a range and say four symbols will be in one bucket bucket 10 will be having two symbols bucket 3 will be having so it has been clustered by so there is no word called bucketing here it says clustered by symbol into 20 buckets okay right now the last but not the least i have to first and foremost i have to enforce bucketing okay another environment variable to enforce bucketing otherwise by default bucketing is not enforced okay then i have to copy the data from the staging table say i'll say from nyc daily staging insert override table nyc i am not i am not specifying partition by and things like that or clustered by in this it is just select star means select all the columns everything is done automatically and behind the scenes by hive for you okay so i just say enter right now it will run a map reduce job it will do its own thing behind the scenes and it will bucket again a query performance will increase because we are using bucketing when you run out of memory sometimes it is good to tune your heap size okay so that is the concept of bucketing that we just uh, while it runs uh, we'll do a quick recap so the concept of bucketing i just showed it to you how it works okay and when will you use bucketing when you do not know how to partition your data based on the columns okay so here you go it is taking each and every record and it is hashing it and putting it into the right place it may run out of memory i'm pretty much sure but that demonstrates the concept of bucketing okay i put a couple of test queries here you can run these queries and see for yourself the performance okay there's another variable that you can set if you have a bucketed table okay and you want to gain performance you want to have a performance gains in the query and if those tables are used in joins set this variable so as to use bucket map join so joins will happen on the map side okay so i put a few lines in there uh, which will uh, help you okay so i'll be giving you the script file anyway so that thank god it worked okay there was no out of memory errors okay so let's do a select from production okay nyse daily production because that's the table that we created the bucketed table nyse daily production and i hope it gives data faster and another query the same query will run from nyc staging just to see the performance gains so it took 18.124 seconds okay and here this table is not a bucketed table and the staging table we run the same query so 18.124 18.8 so it has shaved off almost uh, uh, 700 milliseconds from there so that that gets us to the end of uh, this session on partitioning tables okay in the next session we'll see what are views and index